function overloading in C++. You can have multiple definitions of the same function name in the same scope. The definition of the function must differ from each other by the types and or the number of arguments in the argument list. You cannot overload function declarations that differ only in the return type. So, in the same scope, we can have multiple functions with the same name, but they must be differing in their input arguments. That means either the number of arguments will vary or their argument types will vary or their sequence will vary. So, whatever the differences that should be there in their input parameter list, but we cannot overload functions depending on the output argument types. So, here is one example for us. So, here we are going to define one function, the name of the function is print which takes inti, I. that is another function print which takes double f. So, here we are having the respective C out statements within the function body. Now, we shall go for the next part of the code. So, here we are having another print function, but here it is taking character pointer C and it is printing the respective C here. So, now here we are defining this print data pd. So, pd is the object name. We can find this, this class name is print data, which is containing three different declarations of these functions, definitions of these functions. So, print data pd. So, when you are passing print pd dot print 5, that means you are passing integer. In that case, the first function will be called in that case. When you are passing pd dot print 500 dot 263. So, 500.263 that means we are passing one float here, then the respective function will be called accordingly. So, here you are passing this, this is a double. So, this very function will be calling not the function which, which was taking this inti I as input argument. And the last one when you are passing this hello C++, then this respective character pointer C, this print version will be executed. So, now let us go for one practical demonstration for the better usage and for the better view how the outputs are coming and when which function is getting called. So, here is the practical demonstration for you. In this program, we have defined three member functions with the same name that is print and here the class name under which this member function has been defined under the public scope is print data. So, class print data is a class name under the public section. We have defined this void print inti. So, this print is taking integer as input argument. This print function is taking one double uh, data as input argument and this print function is taking one string as input argument. So, all the function names, all these three function names are print, but their prototypes are differing considering their input arguments. The first one is taking integer, second one is taking one double and the third one is taking one string. And here, whatever the input arguments are there, they are getting printed accordingly. So, in this way, they are getting printed accordingly. So, now we are defining, uh, we are writing our main function. Under this main function, we have defined pd as the object of the print data uh, class. So, pd is the object and print data is the respective class which you defined earlier already. Okay, now, so this is our print data class and this is a print data class object pd. So, pd dot print print 5. So, when you are passing one integer, then the first function, first member function is getting printed because from this very input argument integer type, it is quite obvious that it will get matched with this the first uh, member function definition that is void print inti. Next time we are passing this 500.263. So, 500.263. So, it will be calling the second version of this print overloaded member function. And whenever you are passing hello C as input argument, it is quite obvious that we are passing a string. So, the third version of this print member function will go on executing. So, for the better understanding, it is better to go for the execution output. So, we have clicked on the 
compile and run option and we are finding that printing int so the first function has been called 5 has got printed printing float that means the second print function has been called and it is printing 500.263 and in the last case it is printing this hello c++ so printing character so it is printing character so hello c++ is getting printed accordingly and this is known as function overloading in case of function overloading the same function name will be obtained for multiple number of times but the function prototype must be differing in their input arguments in this way we have explained this program line by line and you have got the clear idea what is a function overloading thanks for watching this video